Hi, future fifth grade graduates. My name is Decca Knight and I'm the coordinator for elementary counseling here in Roanoke City Schools. If you're watching this, it means you'll be a middle school student in Roanoke City Schools next year. And we are all here to help you prepare for sixth grade. Next year, we are excited to have all of our students back in the building five days a week. We cannot wait. If you or a family member though has a medical condition where learning virtually will be necessary, uh, you just need to contact your middle school that you'll be at for an application. Virtual learning, um, if you're using that application and being in a virtual academy, will look quite different than the hybrid learning that you've done this year. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through this video together. Today, I have some of our amazing school counselors and social workers with me to help answer your questions and concerns about middle school. So I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Ms. Foreman and I'm the school social worker at Hurt Park Elementary School. Hi, I'm Brazil Ford. I am a school counselor at Breckenridge Middle School. And I'm Anna Schnetzler or Ms. S and I'm from Woodrow Wilson Middle School. And I am Kyla Dance and I'm one of the school counselors at John P. Fishwick Middle School. Thank you, everybody. So in this video, we're going to be discussing a variety of things, including subjects, teachers, academic and social success, possible extracurricular activities, and other frequently asked questions. So let's start out with a basic question. What will it be like? Well, middle school is where you take what you learned in elementary school about following directions, being responsible, being a good citizen, and working hard and apply those skills to your education. The best way to be prepared is to pay attention to what's going on in your classes and ask questions when you don't understand. While we want you to have social interactions and grow your friendships, remember that your job is to get an education that will get you ready for life. Other things will come up, but if you make a priority out of learning, you'll be doing the right thing. If you are in the building, be sure to keep up with your work by checking your grades online or asking your teachers about your grades. If you're participating in the virtual academy, keep up with your work by checking your grades online and making sure you check for missing assignments each week. Your school counselors are adults that can help you stay connected to your school buildings. Thank you. So when does school start and when does it end? So typically students can be dropped off at 820 or 825 depending on the school. 842 a.m. is when school begins. You should be ready to start your day by 840. The school day ends at 330 p.m. Typically middle school to start later than elementary school. So you get to sleep in a little longer. <laughs> Yeah. So where is everything and when will I find out? So as we've mentioned before, we don't exactly know what school um, is going to look like next year, but in the building, there are some central locations that you're going to want to know about, such as the office, the counseling office, the nurse, the library, the cafeteria, and the gym. Of course, every school looks different. Your teachers can explain the locations of some frequently needed offices in the building. If you need one of these places, ask the teacher in the class that you're in. Your teacher will let you know when it's a good time to do something outside of the classroom. Your teacher may ask you to wait if they're teaching something new or going over something really important. If you're virtual, it's still important to know how to virtually connect with some of these central locations. Some ways you can do this is by calling or emailing your school. Some schools have Canvas pages for these locations. For example, you might be added to your school's library or counseling Canvas page. Hey, thanks, Ms. S. So what about class schedules? Information about the start of school and your schedule will be coming out before school, so look for a call to your parents or guardians or a letter over the summer. Typically, middle schoolers have seven class periods with six to seven different teachers, and you start your day with homeroom. Homeroom is at the beginning of each day and your homeroom teacher is important. This is someone who you will get a lot of information and announcements from. You will get a copy of your schedule with the rooms, the names of your classes and the teacher who teaches it. Your teachers, administrators, counselors and your classmates can all help you keep track of where everything is as well. 
in the beginning, it kind of seems like a lot, but if you remember going to your elementary school for the first time also felt like a lot and everything was new, but you conquered that as well. If you are virtual, we will still be communicating with you over the summer about what your schedule will look like, how to get your computer, uh, what your virtual schedule and platform will be. And remember, attendance is just as important if you are participating virtually. So make sure that you log in every day to complete your work and attend classes. Yeah, that attendance is still really important and we wanna keep that up next year, even if you're virtual, it's a great point. Um, so where do I find expectations for middle school? So each school has a code of conduct you'll be asked to go over with your parent or guardian. You'll both sign the last page and turn it in. Your teachers will help remind you of the expectations of your school. Homeroom teachers are the first point of contact for students that have questions and will be able to direct them to the right people from there. The code of conduct will be reviewed by your homeroom teacher during the first week of school. You and your adult will need to go over the code of conduct together and sign the last page. Your teacher will help remind you of the expectations of the school. Don't be afraid to ask questions when you're not sure of how to handle a situation. Remember, your homeroom teacher is your first point of contact. If you're confused about something or don't know how to do something, please make sure to ask your homeroom teacher. If you are virtual, it is extremely important that you log in every day. You still are assigned to five days of school a week, even if you do not meet with your teacher five days a week. We cannot stress how important it is that you log into your classes and turn in your assignments Monday through Friday. Thank you. So what are our core classes? So in middle school, all students take four core content classes. And in sixth grade, those core classes are math, reading, science, and social studies. In some schools, students also have a writing class. This will be the case for both in-person and virtual learners next year. Okay, well, what about honors classes? So if you are participating in honors classes, the pace is a little faster and there might be some more work that's asked of you, uh, but most of the concepts that you are learning will be the same as your peers, except for science in, in sixth grade. Science works a grade level ahead and also does require participation in science fair. Okay. And Spanish classes. The Spanish classes available to sixth grade students are Spanish 1 and Spanish 1A. If you're registered for Spanish 1, you have the opportunity to receive a high school credit. If you're registered for Spanish 1A, you have the opportunity to receive high school credit after finishing Spanish 1B the next school year. Okay, so what types of electives can I take? Well, we have a few different electives under the category of music. These classes are year long. We've got band where you play an instrument in the brass, woodwind or percussion groups. Uh, in strings, you would play the violin or viola, bass or the cello. And for those who are interested in singing, the third music class is called choir or chorus. In these music classes, you would have two performances during a school year. Now, if you're interested in something besides music, the rotation elective might be for you. Classes such as art, keyboarding, technology, business, and there's a language exploratory like Spanish and French, and a few others are included in the rotation. Different schools have different classes in their rotations though. If you're in the building, the rotation elective is still a choice for you as well as foreign language. As for music, students can play some of the instruments for band in person. Stay tuned for more information about choir and strings will be available at a few schools in the district. Mostly practice is happening at home in the purpose of music classes. If you are participating in the virtual academy, the school counselor will work with you to schedule electives if your application for virtual learning is accepted. Okay, great. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Um, so what about PE? Do we still have it? Again, we don't know what school will look like next year, but typically if you're in the building, you will have PE and health class. Your schedule for health and PE varies from school to school. At some schools, you can wear your regular clothes and switch into tennis shoes. It may be a good idea to bring a change of clothes in case you get sweaty. Your PE teacher will outline expectations for dressing out. If you are virtual, you will still need to log on with your assigned PE and health courses and keep up with all of your assignments. 
Again, it is extremely important that you log into all of your classes as scheduled and complete your assignments. So if I get a locker, what do I need to know? Do I need to buy a lock? Traditionally, all schools provide locks, uh, both for your academic and gym lockers. You can check out videos online about how to use your lock, but we'll also show you how to use your locker and we'll, someone will always be around to help you. Uh, but it's important to remember not to give your combination out to anyone. That's your personal space for the school year, even your best friend. If you are virtual, of course, you won't need a locker for your belongings, but we do suggest that you set up a space in your house that is used just for your learning. We recommend this space involve a flat surface to work on, that it be well lit and as quiet as possible in your home. You can also use earbuds uh, to help you concentrate. It should be ready to go with supplies like papers, uh, paper, pens, and a calculator. And you should visit this space each day to attend your classes and complete your work. Creating your good routine and work habits at home will be super important to your success in a virtual learning setting. Yeah, good point. So will I have classes with older kids? Will I see them in the hallway? You may see older kids in the hallways during transitions. It depends on how the school and the layout and the layout of the hallways. At some schools, you may also have some older kids in your Spanish classes. Okay, what about homework? Um, am I gonna have a lot of it and how do I keep up with it all? Well, every school is a little different, but a simple approach for homework is to look at the things you did at school at home every evening for at least a few minutes per class, even if you don't have homework in that class. You can use that time to organize your papers or computer documents, write in your planner, go over worksheets or prepare for a test or for a quiz. Now, sometimes teachers will give you time during class to complete your assignments. And if you use this time wisely, you'll have less work at home. Once you start to talk to friends and go to after school clubs and join sports, it will be very important to have good habits in place for making schoolwork a priority or at the top of your list of important things to do. Our best advice, use a planner to write down when homework assignments are due. It's best to write them down as soon as you can so you don't forget. Go over your class load each evening and write down if your teacher said that something is going to be due. A digital calendar can work for this as well. If you're in the building, check your grades weekly on student view or by asking your teachers and talk to your teachers or school counselors if you need help keeping up in school. If you're virtual, pick a day each week to reach out to your teachers and ensure that you are caught up and not missing things. They will tell you when the school year starts how to get in touch with them. Check if you have missing assignments each week on Student View and on Canvas as well. And remember to look at that planner or calendar every day. So how am I gonna keep track of everything? It seems like a lot. Yeah, so find a place to write down important dates such as tests, quizzes, and projects. Pick a day each week to look at what is coming up, maybe Sunday night or Monday. Some schools may provide you a planner and it is important that you keep up with it. If your school doesn't give you a planner, it is a great idea to pick one up or even use a calendar app that you like. This will help you keep up with due dates and what's going on in your schools. Your teacher will not always tell you your grades. We use a system called Student View for you to check your grades and your parents can use Parent View. We recommend checking your grades online once each week. If you don't like your grade, talk to your teacher first and ask them what you can do to help yourself. You and your teacher will be able to come up with a plan to improve your grades. If you are virtual, use your computer calendar through Office 365 or use a planner. So what sports or clubs can I join in sixth grade? I often get questions about what sports and clubs are available. Um, and they are different from school to school, but sixth graders are invited to, in, to join in as well. And while we don't know exactly what things will look like next year, usually information about these activities is given out at the beginning of the year or the beginning of each sports season and can be heard daily on the announcements. Each school may require different expectations regarding these activities, such as upholding the code of conduct or maintaining a certain GPA. 
if you are unsure about opportunities, you can contact your specific school. Participating in school sports does require a VHSL physical, even just to stay after school and practice. So it's good to go ahead and get that taken care of over the summer. If you are virtual, you will still be allowed to participate in sports and clubs that are offered after school at your home school, but you will have to have your own transportation to get to games and practices. Check with your home school if that would be a concern for you. There also may be some virtual clubs at schools as well. Okay, well, what about my cell phone, headphones, and social media? What kind of rules do we have about that? When it comes to cell phones and headphones, each school has a different policy for what happens when this expectation isn't met. Find out more in your school's code of conduct and remember that you are responsible for the things that you bring with you to school. We expect them to be off and out of sight during certain times of the day, designated by your school. Your guardian or parent may have to come get your device or item from the school if it disrupts the school environment or you choose not to follow the expectations. So don't risk it. When it comes to social media, remember that everything you say online represents you. Your reputation is made up of how you behave regardless of who is looking. Deleting a comment or post doesn't always work. So if you think someone can't see what you say in a DM, a snap or a comment, think twice before pressing send. Yeah, I love taking that mindful pause before you push that. It's a great idea. So what about my school counselor? I heard that there was more than one at middle school. How will I know which one to talk to if I have questions? Oh, well, you'll get to know each of the counselors at your school and you'll learn more about which counselor you are paired up with when school starts. Regardless, any of the counselors are there to help you at any time during the school day. Middle school counselors will help you with the social and the academic changes that go along with starting middle school. They'll also work with you on career development and help you choose classes that will help you reach your goals. The counselors may see you in the classroom or you may see them individually in their office. Sometimes the counselors also have small groups on different topics or may help you work through disagreements with mediation. You'll learn more about accessing your counselor when school begins. If you are participating in our virtual academy, depending on the counselor in school, there may be direct links to Doxy, which is our counseling virtual platform, email, an online form, or to send messages in Canvas to say that they'd like to talk. You or your adult can always call your school's main office during the school day to get you in touch with your school counselor. Thank you. So you will see some of the safety protocols that we have in buildings this year, like arrows, road maps, and spacing tags. Is there anything else I need to know? Make wise choices. This is a new slate and a new beginning, so take advantage of that. No one knows all this stuff. It's all right to ask a teacher or another student for help. We want you to talk to your parents or trusted adults about school. They really do know a few things about staying organized. Remember to always be yourself. This is how you'll start to make those genuine friendships. There will always be time to talk and get to know your classmates where you can build those friendships. This will be a time when you all start to learn more about yourself and it's okay to express that. Keep talking to your parents or trusted adults about the kind of person you want to be. Do your part to advocate, which means Take up for yourself, speak up for yourself, and know who you need to speak to. A good starter question would be something like, who can I talk to about my grades? Thank you, Ms. Foreman, for really kind of helping our students empower themselves to ask those questions if they need to. So we know that it can be really stressful preparing for middle school under normal circumstances. With all the unknowns, it may feel even more overwhelming. We just hope that this video has helped you to answer some of your questions and has helped with some of your fears. Remember your school counselors, social workers, and teachers will be there to help you in August, regardless of what your year looks like. Parents and guardians, please share this video with your student and reach out to your school with any questions. We thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us and we hope that you all enjoy your summer and um, we'll see you next year. So bye everybody.